Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a crazy day. I was so hoping to get started on my kitchen work and cooking today a lot earlier than what I am, but it's just been super busy. So we are getting ready to go to a family cabin that's been in my family. It's, it's a cabin that we have went to for multiple generations and it's a lot of fun. There's lots of kids and snacks and all the food things and I'll tell you about some of the stuff that we're gonna be making while we're there. But I'm going to go ahead and get things started also because obviously we're getting ready to leave. The washer and dryer are running and the dishwasher is running. So you're probably going to hear all of that in the background and you know what, that is just life. The first thing that we are going to make to take with us is Chex Mix and I need to get the oven going at about 250 degrees or so and what I love about making Chex Mix is that we have a daughter that is gluten sensitive and actually there's going to be multiple people at the cabin that are also gluten free and so I'm able to kind of customize the Chex Mix and what's in it by making my own but I'm going to say this I did grow up eating this and it wasn't gluten free always and you can put whatever you want to in it. So I'm gonna grab some of our ingredients, get something to mix this all in, and we're gonna whip it up and put it into the oven. This is so delicious. It's actually one of my personal favorite snacks. All right, so I did get some of these things in our shop and prep the other day. So some of these things you're gonna already have seen, but we have some gluten-free pretzels. We've got Rice Chex, the Aldi brand and then corn checks the Aldi brand and then these here I'm kind of curious to taste one of these they are a cheddar flavored cauliflower cracker that is gluten free so I don't know if it's going to be a little bit like a cheese it and then I'm also going to be putting in some of these cheese wisps that's the brand name but this is the Aldi version of that all right I just grabbed one of the biggest things I have in my kitchen um, and that is this big stock pot and I'm gonna use this to mix it up. We actually are gonna need this for a couple of recipes today. Um, so I got a cup measure because in total, and there's my oven ready. Um, in total, I want nine, 10, 11, 12, about 12 cups per recipe of the dressing, so, say, so to say, that you're gonna put on here. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of measure out some of what I have here. I think I can figure, yeah. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to double the recipe and see how much it looks like that I have. So that would be about 24 cups in total. I think the other times I've made it in a large batch, like at Christmas time for neighbors and things like that, I believe I doubled it and that was a pretty good amount to go onto my cookie sheets I have back here. So the corn checks, um, we're going to do about nine cups of checks between the two of these. And so I'm just gonna start counting that out, even if there's a little extra, it's not the end of the world. Okay, I did about four of that one. Now I'm going to do, well, if I'm doubling it, actually, I need to do nine of each. So let's go back here. All right, and the little tail ends in these boxes, my girls will love eating as a quick breakfast. I don't usually buy cereal very often, so that's a little bit of a treat for them. This is the perfect type of snack when you're up late playing games, you know, to have something to kind of munch on. 
the having the homemade Chex Mix is just perfect at a cabin whenever you're munching on different things. Okay, so it says a cup of nuts, and I will leave this recipe typed out in the description box below because it is out of my recipe book. So I've got, I would say, probably a cup and a half of peanuts in this thing. And then I'm also going to throw a little half cup of these cashews that were left in this bag. This is a really great way to use up like odds and ends snacks you have around too. All right, now we are gonna go in and do, I'm actually now looking at this, realizing this does not have pretzels in the total. So I'm going to probably just dump in what's left here something like that. So this would be, it's supposed to be a cup of bagel chips. Um, I really don't think this is a cup. So if you were doing it with gluten-free bagel chips, oh, it is about, okay. So these will count as my bagel chips. So I'm gonna have it typed out at like I have it in my recipe book in the description. And you're gonna see how I'm substituting these different things in here. Okay, so now this is where I think I'm going to measure my pretzels and these and just see how many cups they are to kind of figure how much extra sauce to make because technically this is a double batch of the snacky things already. So we're gonna go and see what we can do with what's left here. And then I might make like two and a half times of the sauce that goes on top of these or stirs into it, I should say. And these do look like Cheez-Its. Let me see if I can get a few out and you can see them. They do look like Cheez-Its. I'm gonna give one a taste. They definitely taste like cauliflower, <laughs> not gonna lie, but they're pretty good. I think that they'll be interesting in here. Okay, so we've got about one, two cups per bag. So this is gonna make about four cups of extra goodies in here. Okay, so we're almost to one and a half times of the snacky items. I mean, two and a half times. Oh, okay. So five. Six, okay, so that is what I'm gonna do is just throw in another handful of pretzels and then I'll do roughly two and a half for, or um, yeah, maybe even almost three times the batch of flavoring. Cause sometimes I do extra flavoring in this anyways and these cheese crisps are so yummy. All right, now that we have everything in here, I went ahead and I just tripled the sauce for this. Um, sometimes we do do a little extra on it, so I think it'll be really good. So each batch gets a stick of butter melted. This is mostly melted. I'm gonna whisk it all together. And this is my little bag of homemade seasoned salt that I haven't made a jar for in my pantry. So I don't always have everything really organized, guys. <laughs> Um, so to this, we are going to add two tablespoons for each batch of W sauce. I use that a lot this week. <laughs> if you guys watch my other videos from this week, then you know. So we're gonna need six of these guys. And some people do a ranch version of these of the Chex Mix. Um, I really like this one. So two, three, four, five, yeah, a little extra just for good measure. And then we're going to need about one and a half tablespoons of seasoned salt per batch. So that would be three and a half, I mean, sorry, four and a half. I've got to test my math here. I'm gonna wipe off this tablespoon. And you might be wondering why I like to make my own seasoned salt. Well, I personally eat pretty low sugar 
and season salt often has sugar in it and other additives and so making my own I know exactly what's in it and I know the quality of the spices I'm using as well all right so we've got our seasoned salt and then you're gonna do uh, let's see about three and a quarter teaspoons of garlic powder I'm opening onion powder as I say that garlic powder so I'm just gonna use my little measurer here two three and a quarter and then onion powder we are going to do one and a half teaspoons now I'm just going to whisk the seasoning and the butter all together and if there's any chunks of butter in there you can kind of get that all put together and then all I'm gonna do is take this and pour it right in here one of the reasons that this is so delicious is because it's made with butter which you're not gonna be able to find something in the store like on in the chip aisle <laughs> like anyway that is made with real butter and it's also something that obviously is not going to last a super long time on the shelf if it's made with real butter so that's one of the treats of having homemade Chex Mix is that it has a butter in it, real butter in it. And there's just nothing that beats that good real butter flavor. All right, so I have a big spoon here and hopefully the crunchiness isn't too hard on your ears. <laughs> I'm gonna stir this all together. All right, now that we have all of that stirred in, we're just gonna divide it between two pans. And I think this is a pretty good amount, actually. Oop. And I'm just gonna push this all around. So basically what we're gonna do is roast those spices and the butter onto all of these yummy salties here. So about every 10, 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna pull these out of the oven while I'm working on some other stuff and I'm going to stir them. And just make sure that everything gets kind of toasted right around the same length of time um, on all sides. So I'm just gonna spread this all out. And this is definitely a family favorite. <laughs> going to be very much enjoyed. And then I'm just going to pop these right into the oven and start my timer for 15 minutes till I'm ready to stir it. And then in total, I probably will have these in about 45 minutes or so. So we'll stir it probably about three times as it's in the oven. And I kind of just go by about how brown and toasty everything looks. Okay, I washed up this stock pot and we're gonna make something sweet in it this time. So I wanted to make sure all the good salty sauce flavoring was out of there. We are going to be making my husband's grandmother's graham cracker pudding. This is something that my family has also learned to enjoy. Um, and it's something that my husband's family has eaten for years at family get togethers and things like that. So I'm actually going to be taking this recipe again, the recipe will be in the description box. Um, but I'm going to be multiplying it by four. So that means we need a whole gallon of whole milk and I'm going to start out by putting that in to the pot over here. I am going to reserve a little bit of it to mix up the cornstarch. And this does take cornstarch. This is an old fashioned pudding and you might be shocked to hear that, but we do like some of our good family recipes. And what I'm gonna do is I just have a quart jar here to mix up my cornstarch. And I explained before, but you just wanna make sure you mix your cornstarch with cold liquid. So I'm gonna start heating up 
the rest of the milk just at kind of a medium heat. And while that's heating up, I'm going to put the sugar in here as well. And I'm also going to be putting the egg yolks. So each recipe needs four egg yolks. And so we're going to need a total of 16 egg yolks. So I'm about to start cracking all these egg yolks in here. I'm gonna whisk it and then I will dump them into here with the milk and sugar in just a minute. Amazingly enough, this recipe is not overkill with sugar. So each recipe needs one cup of sugar. So we're gonna do four cups in this batch, obviously, since we are multiplying it by four. And I have made this with cane sugar too. I have some white sugar, I just need to get used up. Thought this would be a good opportunity to use it up. I have switched mostly to cane sugar, but um, so you, I have made this with cane sugar before as well. So we're just gonna get all of this heating together and don't want to burn it. It can be burnt on the bottom. So keeping an eye on it and keeping it whisked is very important. So now I'm going to take the yolks that we cracked and I'm just going to make sure that they're all broken in here. It's not like they have to be massively whisked because most of the time what you're whisking is combining the white with the yolk, <laughs> but since this is just pretty much yolk, um, I'm just gonna mix it together a little bit here, just making sure that we don't have any whole egg yolks in our pudding. So after that, we're gonna pour it all in and add it all together, get it all heating. This is always so challenging. Egg yolks, surprisingly, are very sticky. And I believe it's because of their fat content that they are so sticky. But I try to get all of it out of there. <laughs> all right, so now I'm just going to whisk it. And one of the things that Corey's grandmother did that his family liked a lot was add maple syrup to this as well, or maple flavoring, but maple flavoring is just condensed maple syrup. So I'm going to add vanilla, and then I'm gonna also add some maple syrup to it. And it just adds a yummy, warm flavoring. And my washer is done, if you can't hear it. <laughs> so I'm just going to probably do about a tablespoon per batch that we've got in here since we are multiplying this batch by four. Okay, so the only other thing that I need to add in is a little bit of salt for each recipe and anything that's sweet that's got a little bit of salt just helps to enhance the flavor. And so we're gonna pop the salt in there and then I am gonna just keep stirring it as it's heating up so that it heats evenly. And now we're going to get our cornstarch mixture made up to add into here. So we'll get that going. Okay, so like I said, I took a jar and I just put some cold milk in it. And cornstarch dissolves really easily in a cold environment. So that's what we want. And we're going to need four tablespoons per batch. So obviously multiplying that by four and we'll get 16. And I could have done this with quarter cups, but, or even more than that, but we're gonna just go with it. So. All 
say I just had just enough cornstarch in that canister to make the amount we needed. Okay, so I'm going to shake this really hard till all of the clumps and stuff are out of it. One thing that's really nice about using cornstarch, and some people may prefer not to, that's okay. I like to see if I can find non-GMO or organic, or both, non-GMO organic cornstarch. But because of our gluten sensitivity in our house, it is something that is gluten-free, so it's a great way to thicken things. Um, and obviously, it's also something that a lot of old-fashioned recipes like this one use. All right, so I've just been stirring this and also stirring the Chex Mix in between things. And now I'm going to, it's getting warm. It's not like super hot yet, but this would be a good time to add in my cornstarch mixture. And I'm just going to stir that in. And all the group texts are going off for this weekend. <laughs> what everybody's bringing and doing. So I'm stirring in the cornstarch mixture. And then this also has a tablespoon of butter per batch. So we're gonna need four tablespoons of butter to go in here as well. And this will just melt over the top as I'm stirring it. And you really do have to watch it. You don't want your, anybody out there that's made homemade pudding knows you do not want your pudding to burn. And what will happen is the milk will scald on the bottom of the pan. And it just, it's not a good taste throughout your pudding because it actually spreads that burnt taste through the whole pudding and your pudding is ruined. So, um, yeah. <laughs> you have to just kind of keep an eye on it, which works out great with my Chex Mix because both of these things need a little bit of babysitting. So being able to stand here and do that, I'll let it sit for a few minutes and then whisk it again. It's most important to keep an eye on it right as it's starting to thicken. That's when you can really get some burning going on. <laughs> okay, I am pretty happy with how things are rolling along. The status of everything is the pudding I'm still stirring, still getting up to temperature. And I did pull out the Chex Mix. It's on the other side of the kitchen, cooling down. I'm gonna show you all what I'm going to put all of that Chex Mix into because obviously I need something to store and transport it. <laughs> but the next thing that we're gonna start into is I'm going to make a cheddar cheese beer dip and we'll eat that with some like tortilla chips or some, my sister-in-law has a sourdough business. So if she brings some sourdough, we might cut that up and dip that into the cheese dip. It's going to be really delicious. So. I'm doubling the recipe. The recipe calls for 16 ounces of cheddar cheese. So I'm just getting two portions of that out and I'm going to use my food processor here and actually um, just shred it all up this way since it's a good amount of cheese. And I was trying to think if I needed cheese for anything else, I don't think so. But I would highly recommend for a recipe like this to get your cheese and shred it yourself. It's going to melt so much nicer for a cheese dip. Um, Pre-shredded cheese has a lot of powders and things that are mixed into it, and um, they just don't melt quite as nice. So that's why I'm going to the bother of shredding my own. And I see that this is not going to fit in there, so I need to grab a knife to cut this. I actually have recently gotten questions about this a uh, food processor, it took me a long time to bite the bullet and buy a really good food processor. But now that I have one, especially with the canning and freezing and preserving season upon us, I'm really excited to use this. But one of the reasons I love this one in particular is because the blade is adjustable. So when I'm slicing a bunch of potatoes, say, I can slice them to the exact thickness I want them, which is very, very nice and that is one thing that generally you got to get a nicer food processor for so I decided go big or go home I'm gonna get a really good one and I have not regretted it I've really liked this one all right I think I got my cheese into these sort of big slices that I can put these into the processor <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, I'm done shredding that and I'm back to whisking this. I'm just showing you really probably a small portion of how much I'm actually whisking this throughout this video. <laughs> but it's something that you just have to keep on top of and I don't wanna continue showing you me whisking the same pudding through the whole video. But I'm just reminding you here and there, I am babysitting this. All right, I am trying my best to catch this consistency to show you all because it happens so fast and I'm gonna have to pull this off here in just a little bit. But I can feel that it's thickening on the bottom of the pot and you can see as you go through it, you can kind of see where your whisk has been and it's gonna to continue to thicken and right as it gets to the point of about pudding is when you have to remove it from the heat. There's really not a major way to be able to tell you when that point comes other than to just see it and it's not quite there yet but we're getting closer and then it will continue to thicken in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna pull this off and I'm going to put it into the refrigerator so that it can begin to cool down. Okay, we are on to another load of laundry in the washer <laughs> and we're ready to start our cheese dip. Now, we're going to put our burner on low. If you don't have a cast iron pan, I, I use cast iron, so most of the time I have an oil sitting in the pan. So when I start the pan, it already has some oil in it. I would recommend, and the recipe does not call for this, I would recommend putting a little bit of oil in your pan. So the other thing too is I'm doubling this recipe. Now, the recipe calls for two ounces of cream cheese. That's half a block of cream cheese. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna find a creative way to use the other half of this block of cream cheese. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the entire block into this dish. And so I'm going to put it in here. Now I did soften it a bit and I'm gonna allow it to warm up with the pan. And basically what the recipe says, if you're having a problem with your cheese burning, then you need to turn your pan down even more. So it's like a low and slow situation. And I'm gonna make this dip up and then we are going to actually put it in the oven at the cabin. And I'm not sure when we'll use it. We are doing a pulled pork meal. My husband's gonna be doing pulled pork on the smoker and then we're taking our smoker with us. And then we're also doing a burger meal and then we're also doing a mountain pie meal where we use mountain pie makers over a open fire. So this might go with the, the mountain pie meal or the burger meal since we're doing like bigger sides for the pulled pork, we will see. So I'm going to be getting my whisk. I'm opening up the food processor here with the cheese in it. I basically want enough of the cheese to be able to top off my pan of dip left behind. So the rest of it will go right in to this melted cheese situation. And we're gonna add a few other things to this as well, but the recipe first off calls for just getting this part melted together on a low and slow melt. I have a little helper with me here and we are going to actually put all of this Chex Mix in a two gallon bucket. I love these. I have a lot of them. Obviously people keep five gallon food grade five gallon buckets around, but this is a food grade two gallon bucket. And then we're gonna label the lid so that it can sit on the snack table at the cabin and anybody can come by and put their hand in and get some Chex Mix, right? Yeah. Okay, all right, so go ahead. You can empty that one, I'll empty this one. Yeah. Just grab, yep, since you washed your hands, just grab handfuls and we're gonna stick it in the bucket. What's your favorite part of the Chex Mix? It's the breaking. The cheesy thing? The, che the cheese crackers? Yeah, and the pretzels. And the pretzels, the cheese crackers and the pretzels. I like when I get a piece of Chex that has a bunch of seasoning on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really good too. Alrighty. Ooh, this is gonna be yum. Do you think this will be like a bucket we put by the table while we're uh, playing a game? Maybe some Monopoly or something? Yeah. <laughs> Make it all fit? I don't know, we might have to get a Ziploc bag. 
look, it's in the bracket. It's going to be so good. Okay, so the, I obviously, yeah, there is. Oh, you didn't see the peanuts? Yeah. So we're obviously um, wanting to put this Chex Mix away, but we also need both of my cookie sheets. I only have two um, for the next things that we're making. So we're clearing these off so that we can use them for the next recipes. And look at that! Here, I'll hold it up and then you can kind of push the last of it in. Good job. You're a great teammate. teammate. You were helpful. Okay, yeah, they'll probably be all buttery now. Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on, and this has a seal, so it will be good with the seal on it, and it'll keep everything from getting stale. And I'm just going to take a piece of tape and label the lid so everybody knows what it is. So I will label it gluten-free, so those that um, need to be gluten-free know this. And then we're going to make it Chex Mix. And I'm going to put on here homemade because obviously they're store-bought Chex Mix. So that people know what they're getting into when they get in this. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Yes, it is going to be so good. Alright, so being the mom of the show here of course i am staying up and i'm gonna push through and get all these goodies made up but i have my cheese slowly melting back here so since that's taking a little bit of time i'm going to tackle the next project and that is making a very simple recipe i've actually never made this before but it's a recipe from my husband's aunt and it wasn't long ago that he suddenly remembered these bars that she used to make so i got a hold of her found out what they're called and how to make them. He says that they're one of the best things ever. So we're gonna give them a try. They are called cream cheese bars. So basically I'm doubling the recipe because we're gonna be using a full size cookie sheet um, to, or I guess it would be called a half cookie sheet or a half sheet. I think they are considered half sheets, but anyhow, needless to say, a larger pan than a nine by 13. So I'm doubling everything. So basically you need a yellow cake mix a block of cream cheese, some oil, which I use avocado oil instead of vegetable oil, some eggs, whoops, <laughs> a little bit of sugar, and then some chocolate chips. And I think that these make a really good texture from what I understand. So we're just going to put everything in here. I have a little helper that's gonna help me um, put the different things in. One yellow cake mix two times. Oh, oh. <gasps> Hang on. There you go. Yep, just pour it right in. Two eggs, two times. One third cup of oil, two times. We're gonna make crumbs with this. Right, I mixed together the cake mixes, the oil, and one egg for each recipe. So technically two eggs in this because obviously I'm doubling it. And then I reserved about a cup of these crumbles to use on the top of it. So it will be kind of a topping over top of the cream cheese layer that we're gonna be putting on this as well. So I'm just going to take the crumbles and put them kind of evenly over the bottom of the pan and then I'm able to kind of press them in 
to make a bit of a crust before we mix up the cream cheese portion. I did also spray um, some oil on the bottom of this pan as well just to make sure that nothing sticks in the bottom. Before I mix the cream cheese in here, I'm just showing you all that I am working on melting this cheese together in my pan back here. And it's slowly melting. It's definitely a very slow melt. I'm going to turn it up just a bit, I think, to really get everything melted well. Okay, so for the cream cheese mixture, if you were making only one recipe and not doubling it, you would just do one block, eight ounce block of cream cheese. But since we're doubling it, I put two in there. We're also gonna put two third cup of sugar in there as well. And then we're going to add two eggs into it to mix it all together nice and smooth. The last ingredient that we're gonna add is the chocolate chips. So we're just gonna pour those right in there. And I'm really not gonna beat it too much because I don't wanna beat up the chocolate chips too badly. Um, so I'm just going to kind of stir them in. So I'm just gonna kind of stir them in like that. And we're gonna go back over here and layer this in on top of that crust we made. Since we have such a big sheet here and we're not just making a nine by 13, I'm going to take a spoon and sort of spoon this mixture across the whole sheet so that I can kind of spread it in an even layer. All right, back to our beer cheese dip. Now I've had to play with the temperature a little bit here, turning it back down. I turned it up a little bit just to get it all melted, and then I turned it back down. So we're gonna add about a teaspoon of garlic powder, probably just a little bit more, since I had a little bit of that extra cream cheese in there. I'm just making sure to season it just a little better and then we're going to also put in a few teaspoons of Dijon mustard and you can choose or do your own research of what beer might be best for this i just googled it and this one was suggested so that's what i got and i'm just going to be dumping this right in here and we're going to whisk it all together and let all the flavors kind of combine let the um, alcohol cook off a bit and just slowly stir it all together. And you wanna do this on a low heat from what I understand so that the dairy does not separate. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me 
And I think if I just keep mixing it in and stirring it all together, it should do just fine. Okay, I did grab a few of these disposable pans just so that it's a little bit easier to take everything up there and not have to worry about breaking anything along the way and all of that. So I'm just putting the cheese dip into this pan in the bottom and I did grease the pan. And then I'm going to be taking the remaining cheddar and putting it over the top. And these pans actually came with lids too, so I'll just label this um, on the top so that if someone else ends up popping it in the oven over dinner time, they'll know what it is. All right, we're getting closer to the finish line for tonight and then we'll be able to finish everything in the morning. But I'm going to start some Rice Krispies now. I'm just going to put a stick of butter in this pan. I am loosely following some Rice Krispie recipes that I will leave linked below. They're not gonna be exactly the same because my pan size is a little bit different. So I'm gonna melt this butter um, in the Dutch oven here I have and then we're going to throw the marshmallows in. The one side of my big cookie sheet, this big cookie sheet, the one side is going to be s'mores Rice Krispies and then the other side is going to be uh, Oreo Rice Krispies. And I'm using everything gluten-free so that obviously everybody can have them. All right, we're ready to add in marshmallows and I'm guessing they'll melt pretty quickly in this because it's pretty warm since I was taking the time to put the lids on the tea. And I'm gonna put in two bags of marshmallows. I think that'll be pretty sufficient. Um, in fact, I'm actually leaning more towards a bag and a half since I'm not doing crazy measurements with this. Um, yeah, we're gonna go more like a bag and a half. I think that'll be a little bit better. I'm just looking according to the size of my pan. And I'm just gonna take a spoon, stir it around. You know, if you've made Rice Krispies before, it does not take long, that's for sure. <laughs> Just getting the last few <laughs> lumps out of the marshmallows. And now I'm going to put about seven, I think, I'm gonna see how it looks, but about seven cups of Rice Krispies. Whoops. In here, I'm measuring them with a pint jar. All right, there we go, two, four, woo, we're getting them everywhere, six, and I'm gonna do just a little bit more. All right, now, to go along with stirring in these Rice Krispies, I'm also going to grab, these are a great gluten-free brand of Graham crackers. And the original recipe actually calls for the Honey Grahams, I think, cereal. But we are gonna go with these and I'm just going to break them up as I put them in to the Rice Krispies. And I'm moving quick here because I don't want stuff to burn on the bottom. But I do kind of want somewhat bigger chunks of these. Don't want like it to be completely smashed up. So I'm just kind of stirring it in as I go. And there's three smaller packs in that box. And I'm going to add all three of them in. I'm actually gonna turn this off. Turn my burner off. And I'm going to move it over. I'm gonna remove this pan of bars over here. 
and get this off the heat so we don't end up with burnt Rice Krispies. I know what that smells like. <laughs> Wanna ask me how I know? <laughs> All right, we're gonna move these over. All right, I got them moved over and I need to grab a hot pad because the edge of this is hot. All right, we're gonna stir this all together. And those graham crackers look great in there. You probably can't see them very well on camera just because the color blends in a lot with the Rice Krispies. And I think my ratio of marshmallow to Rice Krispie looks pretty good, especially because we are about to add some mini marshmallows into this as well. So I am not measuring, but I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna add in roughly a cup and a half to two cups of mini marshmallows. And obviously now the heat isn't quite as intense, so they aren't gonna melt fully. They're just gonna be kind of floating around in the Rice Krispie, which is Perfect. So I'm just gonna stir this only a couple of times and then we'll get pressing it into our cookie sheet as quickly as we can so that it starts to set and we can work on the other flavor of Rice Krispies that we're going to mix together too. All right, so to put these in here, I'm just going to start scooping them and Get them all on one side because I'm going to put my other flavor on the other side. So I think they're going to fill out this side pretty well. I think my guess was pretty spot on with the amounts I needed. And so far the mini marshmallows seem to be hanging in there. Some of them have really melted into it, <laughs> but I think it's going to work out just fine. And gonna make myself a little kind of dividing it down the middle I can really smell the gray ham crackers in this and like kind of I don't know it's just kind of a honey scent from this go now I'm going to grab a little bit of butter and put it on the tips of my fingers so that I can press this in if you oil or butter your fingertips you're able to press it press down on the Rice Krispies without them sticking too bad I might have to grab just a little bit more butter and I'm really happy with this amount so I think to do the other side I'm gonna do very similar measurements, just different add-ins. So get it all scrunched up on this side. Okay, that looks to be about half in my opinion. Now let's top off these s'mores crispies. Okay, you're going to want to do this as quickly as possible because you want the chocolates to melt in just a bit like they would on a s'more. So I'm just pulling some of these minis out and I'm going to put them over the tops of the crispies. And hopefully we can get a good melting in just a bit. I'm gonna press them in, I think, just a little bit too. That way we get a nice, hopefully, come together, <laughs> glue together just a bit. I like these minis. They kind of give a nice uh, look to this instead of using the full-size bars which is what I was hoping for whenever I grabbed them on the shelf for this. It's almost getting <laughs> cooled too much. So I definitely should have done this a bit faster, 
but that's okay. They're still gonna work out. All right, I think I like that. I think we're, we're pretty good. I might put a few on the edges. Since these are a bit thicker, um, they'll probably get cut into like smaller squares. And you know how it is. Everybody's just kind of picking it. This and that when you're doing playing games or chatting. All right, I like that amount. And now I'm going to take just a few. I don't know if they're gonna even stick. Oh, they are. They're sticking great. Okay, I'm just gonna take a few mini marshmallows and stick them all over the top too. The kids are gonna love these. They're gonna pick these for sure because of the chocolate bars. <laughs> Yes, and the chocolate's actually starting to melt. I'm seeing some melting happening here. So that is perfect. This is gonna be a go-to summertime dessert slash snack to take with me places because it's super easy and I think it's unique enough that people would be intrigued by it. Okay, let's make the other half. I am melting marshmallows in here to do the same exact base. So about seven cups of Rice Krispies and a bag and a half of the marshmallows and one stick of butter. But we are going to make some Oreo flavored. And so I'm going to take these gluten-free Oreos and do just, I don't know, roughly the same amount of mix in as the graham crackers, somewhere around there, but I'm going to crush them, partially crush them. I'm not going to grind them down to powder or anything. <laughs> Just enough that they can be mixed in pretty well throughout the Rice Krispie. All right, friends, so it's the next morning. I am ready to head off to the cabin. We have almost everything packed, but we've got a couple of things to just tie up here with some food stuff before we head out. So this is our pudding, and you can see it's pretty pudding-like in there. And I just left it sit overnight to get totally cool throughout. And I'm going to add in one container of whipped cream. now. If you, in the recipe, it doesn't really give a certain amount of whipped cream. This is just something that we know we like in it. However, I don't put a lot in it. Some people put an entire container of whipped cream per recipe. Remember we multiplied this recipe by four. We prefer our pudding a little less creamy, if that makes sense. So sometimes I'll put about a half a container per recipe but I'm just gonna throw one container in here. I'm stirring this around just a little bit, making sure everything is combined. And then we are going to take these graham crackers I have here. Get back to that in a second, right before I put it all in. So I'm, I got a huge, I think this was called an extra large lasagna pan. I don't think it's a roasting pan, but very similar, a big, whopper of a <laughs> of a disposable container to take this in and what i'm going to do some people layer the graham crackers in um but a lot of times if i'm making a big amount like this i just simply put it over the top so i'm going to take the three packs that just like we're in the other one when we did the s'mores and i'm going to put them into a ziploc bag and then 
I am going to smash them into pieces with a cup. Now, if you were gonna do this with regular graham crackers and not gluten-free, this brand of gluten-free graham crackers, they crumble very easily into um, like crushed graham crackers. But if you were going to use regular graham crackers, you might wanna put them in your food processor because you do want the cracker dust <laughs> to be pretty fine for on top of this. So I'm just gonna take a cup and smash them up. It'll be really easy to do because like I said, these crumble very easily. And this is so good. I can't even explain it to you. If all you've ever experienced is like putting cups and not real homemade pudding, <laughs> then you've got to try this recipe because it's going to bring a little bit of something that we love in life to your house with this pudding. And it's not as thick either as like a pudding cup would be. All right. I think I grabbed a ladle because the girls wanted a little bit to snack on. And I think I can just scrape the whole thing out or dump it, I should say. You're gonna see that the consistency is just a bit different than, ooh, that fits in there nice, um, than like store-bought pudding. All right, we have one whopping large family-sized pudding for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to just, actually, come to think of it, I think I'm going to take these with me. I think I'm gonna wait until we are at the cabin to put them on here. So I'm just gonna cover this and grab the next things I need to get ready before we leave. Got this stuff kind of wrapped together. So pretty much just dumped blueberries in here, strawberries in here. This has some celery, some cucumber, and then I have another cucumber here. And then I went out and grabbed some dill out of my little patio garden and made some dill veggie dip. It's so good with the cucumbers. Um, it just has some cream cheese, some sour cream, the dill, some salt, some onion powder and garlic powder just whisked up and I'm going to cover that up. There are others bringing veggies as well, but just to add to the pile so that we've got fruits and veggies in between all the wonderful treats that we'll have. Just to give you a picture into our packing process for this, we have, I put this table up and we've just been piling things here. We have to take all of our own bedding. So that has to come with us. Here's the ice chest waiting for me to pull stuff out of the refrigerator. Um, let's see, we've got bags of like barbecue sauce because my husband is doing this pulled pork and we have cases of drinks, we have games and one of the other things. Here is all of the buns for the pulled pork over here in this box. We have girls got pool noodles, we have floaties back there for swimming, we've got bike helmets for biking, we've got random pieces of clothing going along, our paper products. It's just, it's a whole thing. And I remember my mom doing this and man, moms are, the foundation of weekends like this, for sure.